Hey, Alan Garper. Creator of the popular blog, The Daily Harpoonist. Welcome to my home. My name is Alan Gardner. And the blog is called The Daily Cartoonist. And this isn't your home, it's my bedroom. How did you get in here, Stefan Pastis? If I told you I killed the Night Watchman, would you be upset? Yes, of course. Then let's just say I walked past him because he was... sleeping. Okay, I'm calling the authorities now. Say, what's with the affected English accent? Does it have something to do with the pretentious way you spell your first name? Actually, I think the English accent makes me sound more intelligent and clever, don't you? I think it makes you sound like Steve McGarry. And he wrote the comic strip mullets, so you might want to rethink your logic. What do you want, Pastis? I heard you were ending the comments section of the Daily Harpoonist. What's going on? I created the blog five years ago as a means of better understanding where comics were heading, more specifically syndicated comic strips and editorial cartoons. I had no business plan or goal as to what the blog would become and I had no idea that it would become the community that it has become. Oh. You're giving me the long version. The first three years, I enjoyed a positive reputation. I often received compliments on how informative and civil the comment section was. Sure there was the occasional flame war, but overall the blog had become a destination for excellent commentary. I always thought the Scott Kurtz fat jokes were funny, but that's between you, me, and a lampshade. Since then the tone in the comments changed. Moderating the comments became more difficult and I adopted a freer, if they want a flame war, let them have a flame war attitude. Unfortunately that decision has altered the perception of the blog. No longer is it viewed as the informative place to go but where all the batshit crazy, excuse the French, cartoonists go. I took French class in high school and I'm pretty sure that is not French. Did I ever tell you the story of how I was once a lawyer and how I copied Scott Adams strips to become a successful cartoonist? Looking at the blog as a business, the blog is the sum of two products, news and commentary. It's hard to calculate the number of people who visit each day just to read the comments. Most come for the news and then check to see what people are saying about it. Controversial topics increase traffic about 20% to 25% or so. You'd think with increased traffic, ad clicks would increase, but looking at the numbers there is no corresponding increase in ad revenue on those days. Apparently flamethrowers don't click ads. Just a small note. But you looked much fatter on Tom Racine's video podcast show. On the other side of the equation, there are real quantifiable costs to having an open comment system. The blog is not my day job, but it is usually my day job that is interrupted to read the comments, pull comments from the moderation or spam queue, take phone calls or respond to emails from angry reader who feels maligned. These are real costs on my time and energy. Those that advocate the most vocally about how the comments should remain open pay none of the costs. Ask any marketer and they'll tell you word of mouth advertising is king. Unfortunately the word of mouth messaging surrounding the blog is negative. The comment section is hurting my brand. And your breath is hurting my nose. No offense, Alan. After months of waffling, weighing and wondering I've made the decision to close the comments completely for now. The benefits no longer outweigh the costs. I'm working on a redesign for the site that I hope to launch in the coming weeks. Can you use other colors besides red and gray and white? I'm so bored by that color scheme I could scream. One of the main goals is to redirect the discussion out to you and wherever you socialize, think Facebook and Twitter. That way the discussion can continue and I reduce my costs of having to moderate. There will be other content changes. I will continue to cover newspaper-based cartooning which has been the core of my coverage to date, but will be increasing my beat to include other areas of sequential art that I typically haven't covered. I'll detail those changes in a later post. More coverage of pearls before swine, I assume. One last item of business. Last week I made the decision to cut off access to the comments for several individuals. The direction of the blog is changing. 
It wasn't personal or based on a disagreement over their views. Mostly it had to do with their inflammatory style of debate that is no longer welcome on the blog. I'm really going to miss Ted Rawl telling us why he's so brilliant and why everyone is an idiot for not appreciating the important secret Asian man and Diesel Sweeties. That man was the best thing that ever happened to pearls before swine. So that's it. Anything else? What? What do you mean? Well, aren't you going to ask to take your shirt off? Oh, I see what this is all about now. You're gay.